Hello and welcome to another update video about eGold. Last time I covered eGold, it was actually in July. Since then, not too much has happened actually. We are still in the same range that we were back in July. Um, you can go back, check the, the YouTube video um, library here and uh, you might find that video from, from July. But um, I'm also gonna tell you what I suggested uh, when we get into this price section down here. But yeah, eGold, um, it's not my favorite chart. I can tell you that straight away. It's, um, in my opinion, a rather unreliable chart. It looks a little bit similar to what Luna did. It looks similar to um, the AVEX chart. They are all charts that are suffering at the moment, yeah? And they all have a very similar pattern here back in 2021. And it's not a very bullish pattern. It's extremely difficult um, to read. The problem is that this pattern, and I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt, I'm giving it the, let's say, uh, the chance to be bullish, but this pattern can also easily be counted as corrective and then it would obviously take e-gold um, to the crypto graveyard. Now that is not my primary expectation though, but we need to be aware of the risk. Any coin that has such a clear three wave structure here, it could very easily just be an A wave, a B wave and a C wave to the upside. Yeah, that's the problem with this chart. And if you have an A, B, C to the upside, you are looking for five waves down and you actually want to get below the price of the or below the start price and then we're looking at something here below a dollar so i'm just i'm just warning about this possibility and even though this is not my primary expectation but if a chart has a let's call it um, a pattern like this built in it is not necessarily a chart i personally would want to be involved with in terms of a long trade or holding it as a cryptocurrency in my hardware wallet yeah just, just to make that clear, because even though, of course, there is significant upside potential if it works out, the problem is if there is a decent chance that they, this chart is going to fail, why, why would I want to be involved in that? So um, it's, just, it's just my view, but um, the truth is many charts with such a pattern aren't looking too good today. And um, the question is, you know, are they gonna, are they gonna come out of the bear market? In a solid way or not but we take a look at the bullish scenario in this video we also take a look at a possible bearish one the bullish scenario is that eGold finished its wave one cycle back in april 21 so we had a wave one here and here we get the first problem of this chart the only way i can still count this bullish would be to count this as a wave one that we came down in an a wave we moved up in a massively overshooting wave B. By the way, many cryptos did that, but eGold, um, well, it's a massively overshooting wave B. Now this is possible. They can overshoot by 200% in very volatile market environments. So a move up B to the upside. Bear in mind that it's a time where everybody was expecting 100K Bitcoin. And then we, um, we are looking here at the C wave to the downside. And this would be a bullish pattern because this year, the C wave would be the end of the overall correction. So we've got an A wave down, we've got a B wave up, and we've got a C wave down. And the C wave is a five wave move. So before we go into the detail here, this is my primary expectation. Before we go into the detail, what other wave counts are there? Well, I did consider before, um, but that was even before July, consider the option of having here one, two, one, two setup. That would have been very bullish but the market dropped below that low and you can't you can't justify that, it's, it's invalid, okay? So <clears throat> the only option really is here a one and then an A, B, C, but the high overshooting wave B already, I'm struggling with that because as I said, it could just easily be an A, B, C and then the, the outlook would be very bearish, okay? Now, if we go on the log chart, this would suggest a very similar count. So I'm quite confident this might be the correct one. Um, but I still have my concerns. Now you don't, you know, I don't really like to use the log chart, but if there are Elliott wave analysts who use it, so it's sometimes worth checking as well. But here as well, you know, you can count five waves up, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, in this move to the upside. And then I would consider this an A, B, and then here the C wave down. That makes sense as an overshooting wave B. We had many cryptos that did that. So for me, that is a count that makes actual sense. Okay, so let's go back. Talked about the bearish count. That would obviously send us below, as I said, below a dollar. The bullish count here 
that I'm going to go with is also confirmed by the log chart. So I can I can go with that. First of all, because we, before we go into the lower level detail here, you can see that in the C wave, we've most likely done a wave one, a very long wave one, which is absolutely valid. A wave two to the upside. And um, then here, a wave three down. No, one second, the two needs to sit here. Um, and then a wave three to the downside, the wave four probably complete, and we're now in the fifth wave down. That tells you already what I expect, which is another low, and we take, take a look at targets as well. But before we go into downside targets, what would be an all-time high target? Well, he, he, here's the problem, because the wave one is very weak. If I count it like that, um, I mean, could it be, could it be something weird like, and that's, that's just one other idea, but it's completely unrealistic, so I'm not gonna go with that, but it's technically possible that this was a wave one, this was a wave two, this actually was a wave three, we come, came down in four, and this is a long wave five. Technically possible, yes, not really likely, because this would have to be a wave four, and we would have retraced way too much in the wave four. You know that a wave four would normally not retrace more than 50%, so... However, here we would have a retracement of the 78.6% FIB level. So no, so that's why I, um, I'm i not really a fan of that. Um, and it has to be an A wave in my opinion, yeah. Okay, target however for next all time high. And again, here's the problem because um, if we draw the FIBs like that and we have to assume we go a bit lower, but let's just calculate it from the current low. Um, the problem for the next high would be because the wave one is so weak we might only get here to $446. Now that's solid 10x from here, the 1.618 extension. That would obviously be the minimum target, but the 1.618 extension is normally the minimum target that I mentioned for a wave three. Now the wave three could also go up to $540, the 200% extension, but it may not take us above the wave B high. So the problem is here that in the next um, bull run, we might not easily reach all time high, maybe only in the wave five. Now, from the current point of view, that's not too much of a problem because you can get, still get more than a 10x. Bear in mind, these are minimum targets. But it still is a concern that wave one was quite weak. So again, it's a chart that for me is not too attractive just purely because of that, because they don't. it's not that, that, that much of a clear pattern, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the lower level wave count now that we've talked about all-time high targets, talked about the overall wave count, um, and interesting is now this last section here because um, first of all let's take or let's talk about what I said in the last in the last video so that was back in July we had the wave 3 low in and there was a decent let's call it probability that a low was in yeah we saw the possibility for Bitcoin as well um, but the condition was that it would break substantially above the $65 level that was key resistance as you can see it was a fake out didn't break above it and I told you back then that I wouldn't touch this coin until we break above that level. I probably would still, because of the longer term chart, chart history, personally not really touch it myself. Yeah, I mean, this is no financial advice. It's only what I would or would not be doing just because the chart structure just leaves doubt in terms of the overall outcome. Yeah, And if the if a chart is not 100% clear or if I have a slight concern, why would I, you know, why would I do it? Um, but yeah, we, we never uh, broke above that level. And I said in that video, if we don't break it, we will probably come back to the uh, June low, which is around $38. And we are pretty much there. I mean, we came back here on the 21st, 22nd of November to 39 US dollars. So pretty much there, pretty much scenario fulfilled because the breakout failed. So now the question is, how do we carry on? I can already tell you that this red candle um, pattern here doesn't look very uh, bullish. So my view is that we probably haven't seen the low yet and that we're still chasing another low. We are going to talk about um, targets here. So what is likely for this chart? So I'm considering to count this entire move down as an ending diagonal. Ending diagonal um, means we can have overlaps between waves one and four. We don't need to have that, but um, this sometimes happens or often happens. But most likely, um, if we can count the subwaves as ABC, which we can do here, if we count the subwave structures as ABC, it allows me to count the wave five as well as ABC. 
and ABC structures are only valid in diagonals. So the, the, the idea I have here is to count this wave five as an ABC. Um, I am doing the same thing on the ADA chart. So the idea is to have this here as an, um, an A wave, then we have A, B, C and B, and we might now just be starting the C wave. And that means we, we might really just be starting the C wave and we could already have here a small one, two setup in wave um, C. I don't know how valid that spike is though. Um, that's Binance obviously, so I, I would think this is probably, maybe let's quickly check Kraken. Okay, here we have even more un unnatural spikes. With, it, with those spikes, I always try to count them in, but here it's not on Bitfinex. So see, and that's where the problem sometimes comes in with those charts. I would rather, I would rather say it looks like an unnatural spike. I, mean, I don't even wanna consider that, yeah. See, and that's that's where you get a bit of uncertainty. I, I would rather for this video disregard it um, and say the wave B peaked here at $47 or 4660. Um, so that in this B wave, we have a fairly clear A, B, C itself. And then we're now heading down in five waves and the ideal scenario would be to to come down in a five wave structure now one two three four five yeah i mean the other idea would be that this was only a one two and we're now coming down in three then there would be a four and a five that's possible as well because i mean we can also find waves waves we can also find ways to count um this not as a diagonal because as i said normally in a diagonal you would have an overlap between waves one and four, it's not an absolute must, um, but then I would I would need to count all of these as five wave moves. And again, it comes down to interpretation. What I try to say is that I don't necessarily need to count this last leg down as an ABC. I could just count it as a five wave move, one, two, three, but then there would be probably another four and, and another five. So we would probably come down a little bit more Okay, so what would be the target for the C wave down? So we can do that in terms of going to the high of the um, the beginning of the wave A there, yeah. Go to the high, which was here on Binance at $65. And then we take the length of that. Just need to pick the right tool. We pick the length of that, and when we go to the high of the B wave, which I've got here at 64, sorry, 46.50, and an ideal target would be the one to one ratio. So that is what I would currently go with now. Anything between the one to one ratio, which is at $21.76, down to the 1.618 extension at 647. It is currently not possible to specify that any further because I don't have a very clear um, view of the subdivisions here. Yeah, Technically, all it needs to do um, to fulfill this fifth wave requirement technically is to go below the low of the wave three that is at $37.85 but the ideal structure would point towards $21.76 down to $6.47 yeah and you know in future videos I might be able to specify that further we need a clearer view of the subdivisions here to define that in in a better way but um, this is sort of broadly what I would go with at the moment in terms of targets. So that might mean another 50% drop here. Um, right, what else to talk about? I guess this is the most important, um, the important outlook here that there was still another low. When would this be invalidated? Well, it would be invalidated this particular wave count if we get above $64.90. So above this wave four high. That is when we would have to consider something more bullish, but I can currently not see any kind of bullish pattern emerging. I mean, again, you know, you can get away with um, if you want to interpret this because there's always a bullish scenario as well, right? But uh, how likely is it? So the bullish case here for me would be to count this as some kind of a leading diagonal, a wave one. Then we came down here possibly in an A, B, C pattern and then we would need to move up, but then the move up from this low here, from the 22nd or 
23rd of November isn't really impulsive. So I'm losing confidence in that. So yeah, I mean, again, it all it all um, comes down to to get more confident in a bullish count here would be that we need to move above that 64.90 or $65 level. Um, maybe one more thing just want to talk about where is the 88.7% Fibonacci retracement level that usually gives us a very, very good way, uh, view about is a coin at risk. And if we draw the FIPS to the high of the wave one, and I would have to start down at zero because this is really the first larger cycle. Um, but you can see we are still above the 88.7% FIP level, above $28. Um, so that might be some more support on the way down. That would be pretty much in line with that spike back in August 2020. Um, I'm not, however, you know, not 100% confident in this. This is how you would measure the FIPS based on the Elliott Wave method. Um, if the count is like that. However, if we, for whatever reason, have the Wave 1 up here, then we've dropped below the 88.7% FIP level. Now, again, I told you this is not likely that the Wave 1 is up here. But you can see, and that is why I'm considering it as well, that actually the chart has adhered to this FIP level very nicely and we are comfortably below it, yeah, which is not a good sign. Uh, and that's the problem with a chart that has these overshooting wave uh, Bs. Yeah, we drop below it and we're retesting it from below a few times here, which is not very, uh, not a sign of strength. I just wanted to add that. But yeah, looking at the my main count, the 88.7% FIP level is actually at $28. So um, that I would I would look at that in terms of additional support if we come down. So maybe an additional possibility to bounce from here before we even get into the yellow support area. Okay, um, yeah, that's my update about eGold. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the men uh, channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.